Hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and this video is part of the United We Flourish blog hop, and that is a stamp set combination this time with Altenew and Ellen Hudson. And Altenew designed them, Ellen's putting them out, it's the only place you can get them, and they're available for a limited time. So it's a beautiful stamp set with some layering stamps as well as some outline stamps and it has one of my favorite sentiments in it I admire you so I'm going to use it a lot and this is the stamps kind of well my bad rendering of layering them I'm terrible at layering them and knowing where the center piece goes and stuff and I also have terrible ink colors to choose from because I don't have many inks I use mostly black ink but there was a stamp that I used this is also an all to new and I did these kind of hazy stamps in the background and I decided I was going to do something similar to that with this stamp set. So I stamped each of the flowers twice and I'm going to use kind of the idea of these ones in the back. You could stamp them if you want with um, either some distress inks and then watercolor with them or something but I'm just going to use a brush and I'm just going to paint the flowers on there. And I'm going to use some yellows for for the yellow poppies, I'm going to do another version with red. And I'm just going to make blobs. You might have noticed that that background shape looks like a blob. And so it's easy enough to do something like that here and be able to create something that looks like you have more flowers in the background than the ones you've stamped in the front. So I'm going to add some heavier yellow pigment just to the tips and maybe, you know, create a little bit of something that looks like it might have another petal. I just want some soft suggestions of flowers in the background. And with yellow, you can afford to have a little stronger color just because it's yellow. It's going to dry back lighter, but I want to make sure that I don't have any weird shapes that are going to stop in the middle of my sentiment. So I just spread that color out a little bit with water and then add one more flower down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to let this dry a little bit before I do the next step. And I'm going to move on to my second version, which is going to be with red poppies. And I'm going to do the same kind of an idea. I'm just going to do fewer in the background this time. But notice the color that comes off the tip of my brush is heavy pigment. And then the water is coming out of the rest of my brush. These brushes, uh, it's from the Black Velvet line from the Silver Brush Company. This is a number 8 that I'm using, but for this you might want to use a number 12. Those are the two sizes I use the most. And I'm just going to put a couple flowers in there and not a whole ton. If you have any odd areas where it seems to be drying with sharp edges, you can just add a little or do a little dabbing with a Kleenex or something. So by now my yellow one is partially dry. It doesn't have to be completely dry because you would only be bleeding yellow into yellow, but it helps to have it a little bit dry. And I'm going to paint each one of them with more yellow. And the yellows in my palette, my colors that I'm choosing, this is uh, Permanent Yellow Deep, which is a really gorgeous, almost Y17 color, Y17 color, which is my favorite Copic color. And I'm going to add some colors to the inside of it. I can add either heavier pigment of that Permanent Yellow Deep, which I did right there, or I can also add some like a reddish color in there. So right now I'm just going to add a little more of this, you know, kind of a, a deeper, deeper version of yellow with more pigment, less water to make a richer yellow. And then I can tip in just a little tiny bit of some transparent pure orange. And even though it's called transparent pure orange, it's a pretty good red. And just going to drop a little bit of it in, in a few of the petals. I can move it around. Since I have all this nice wet pigment in there, it's probably going to run a little bit on its own. So be gentle with how much color you put in if you want to leave a lot of that yellow because if you put too much, it's harder to get the red out. So you can always add more. But this will allow me to have some sort of modeling of colors. M-O-T-T-L-I-N-G, having them kind of move around a little bit and have some different flavor to each one of the petals. So now I'm going to set that one aside and to dry paint my red ones. So I'm going to use that same transparent pure orange again. You can see how red it is. And just fill in my flower 
with a bunch of the paint. Now I'm doing this quickly and painting all of my flowers at the same time as a group because I'm quick. You may find it's going to be easier to add your shading and stuff one flower at a time. I wouldn't do it one petal at a time because you want the whole flower to look like it's all together. So unless you're really going to be specific and try to make shading on every single petal, it's easier to just do the whole flower all at once. Or like me, I'm doing them all as a group. But that top flower doesn't have as much pigment, you can tell, on it as the other ones. So when I get to the next step, I'm going to have to do a little adjustment. But I thought that would be a good lesson to share with you anyway, in case your paint starts to dry as well. But the others are pretty good and rich in the amount of water and pigment they have on them. So when I start putting other colors in there, they're going to definitely start to move and blend right away. So I'm putting some purple in here, and it's Carbazole Violet, a very strong deep purple. But since it didn't move very much, I grabbed some more of the transparent pearl orange to paint into it, and it, it just gave it a place to move by adding it um, around it. And there the, the purple moved right away because that pigment was still wet. So depending on how damp your paint is, you may have lesser or or more opportunities to move the color and you could also leave just little highlights on some petals like that one little petal there has a, a beautiful highlight and you can leave some of them being lighter some of them being darker that sort of thing just know that your color is going to lighten with any watercolor when it dries that's just watercolor what watercolor does don't feel like it's a failure that way but just know that you want to put your color down darker than, than you might think you would need. And here I thought, well, let me see if I can add a few, or take away a little color so I can add a few highlights back in so my flowers won't be quite as kind of deep and harsh. So just add a little bit more to them. And then I let everything dry completely before this next step because I don't want any of my green to end up in my yellow. And poppies have, for the most part, long windy stems. So even though the stem in the stamp set is a straight one, you can make long kind of intertwined windy stems. If you can make any of them cross, it's especially beautiful. And then add some leaves. Now I looked up poppy leaves and I'm trying to figure out like the best way to explain them. And these are not perfect poppy leaves by any means, but you can look them up and see how the, they're shaped. But it's basically one long stem down the middle and then some matching ones across from each other, sort of, so that the stems come, stems of each of those leaf fronds come down to the same place on the, the base stem of the leaf. I don't know if that's the right scientific name for all those parts of a leaf, but let's try that explanation again. So I'm going to make one at the tip and each one of these poppy leaves has a few little things sticking out from it. Don't worry about making them all perfect because really it's just a very light watercolor wash that you want to create for this. Just something very loose in the background. And I'm using just real light, light pigment and more water in them. And here I was kind of liking the fact that I was running out of pigment and I had more water because then it got lighter as it got to the bottom. And that's just going to give it more of a watercolor feel but I'm trying to create a few branches here and there, a few leaves, so I have a little bit of laciness. I wanted to put some more in the background, not everywhere on the card, because I like the idea of having the sentiment there kind of floating out in, in some empty space, but that was too much pigment. It got too dark right around there. I don't want that much color taking away from the sentiment, but, you know, kind of, painting with, with more water and less pigment as I get into the soft ones in the background. Just to give myself a little bit of detail and laciness without really fussing about it too heavily. Try, not trying to make them all perfect, just trying to give the suggestion of more of a garden than just in those few stamps. And then we're going to do the same thing with the red poppies. And here I'm going to start out up by the sentiment, so I make sure I, I do some really light leaves down there. And you can start with the lighter ones first and kind of get a handle on how 
light or dark you want them before you get into the deeper ones down at the very bottom. And of course I didn't put my stems down on this one, but we'll work on that in a little bit. So I'm going to add my, my main part of the leaf, the leaf at the top, and then make a V for each one of those two little petals coming off of it. And I'm just going to try to add a few little strokes onto the edges of those leaves so they don't end up looking like they're just a single shape. Because even if they're not perfect poppy leaves, they're not going to look like a fern or something, at least. Just add a few more. On this one, I'm obviously leaving more white space on the card where I filled in more of the yellow and put more of the big yellow flowers in the background. So you can add as few or as many as you want. You can just add one, one poppy that's painted in with the black lines around it and then other poppies that would all be shadow poppies behind it. It could be really beautiful as well. But just adding some a few of these light leaves in places where I have some empty spots in there just so I have some color in there and some suggestion of more garden back behind it all and uh, just kind of get lighter toward the back and darker toward the front and then I can go back in and add a little more strength of color to my little stems that are coming down just to give them a little more oomph on the card. And then I put them both onto card bases. I popped the watercolor panel with some dimensional adhesive. And then I realized I wanted some dark centers in the middle of them because poppies have those really dark middles. And so I'm just gonna take a black Sharpie now that everything's all good and dry and just do some scribbling in that center section because it's gonna give some punctuation to those poppies. So they have some real power to them and just do a little scribbly scribble you can actually change the shape of those inner leaves and if you're doing multiples of the same flower and make sure you turn the stamps every which way and if you can differentiate those insides then it won't look like you've replicated the seam stamp over and over again so here's my finished cards which I think came out beautiful and simple with that admire you sentiment that I think I'm going to be using a lot, whether I use them with these flowers or not. I love the idea of sending a card to someone that you admire and letting them know that. I might even send them to like some famous people who have no idea who I am, just to tell them I admire what they do with their life. So there's some more videos here. There's a link to the blog hop in the description. Be sure you subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.